That's great. To Canada's most celebrated and revered writers has passed away. After a lengthy battle with breast cancer, Pulitzer Prize winning author Carol Shields died last night. The one time University of Manitoba professor wrote novels, plays, poetry, and short stories celebrating the lives of ordinary women by making them extraordinary. Here's Global's Connie Tomoto. An outstanding woman, an outstanding friend. Friends and colleagues in the literary world paused and paid tribute to award-winning author Carol Shields. She had a gift for friendship. She really did, and it didn't just shine on me. It shone on people. It shone on um, people who were close to her. It shone on everyone she met. Carol passed away Wednesday night from complications of breast cancer surrounded by family in Victoria. She was 68. She was imminently patient and imminently generous, and... Um, a very classy and wonderful human being. Born in Illinois in 1935, Carol Shields moved to Canada in 1957, then moved to Winnipeg where she lived and worked for over 20 years. Carol's a hometown girl, of course. Here she crafted her art of writing, winning numerous awards, including the Pulitzer Award for the Stone Diaries. She also taught in the English department at the University of Manitoba. There's not a student of hers today that doesn't owe a debt of gratitude to Carol for what she did for them. Over her career, Carol published several works, including Larry's Party, later remade into a Manitoba Theatre Centre play. Carol is an inspiration to us no matter whether she's alive or not. Carol's works also inspired a film adaptation of six of her short stories. The S.H.I.E.L.D. stories are like Carol. They grow on you. Um, they seem deceptively simple, perhaps, when you look at them, or they seem to be about deceptively normal people um, and then you realize that the insight that Carol brings to those people and the kind of humor and whimsy which is her own sensibility that she brings to the telling of their stories is unique to Carol and for those close to Carol it's the same uniqueness that they will miss as they learn to adapt to life without their friend and one of the country's greatest authors it's a new kind of life and we just have to try to get used to it and I'm not sure yet how to do that. A Canadian literary icon and former Manitoban has passed away. Carol Shields was a deeply respected and widely celebrated author. Last night, at the age of 68, she died of complications from cancer. Shields is the author of 10 novels and three short story collections. She also wrote poetry, plays, and critical studies. Her writing career spanned 30 years, work for which she received prestigious literary recognition. Most notably, she won a Pulitzer Prize for her work, The Stone Diaries. Her book, Larry's Party, won an Orange Prize, given to the best book by a woman writer in the English-speaking world. She was also nominated for Canadian awards such as The Giller. Last year, she was a finalist for Britain's most prestigious literary award, the Booker Prize for her novel, Unless. She also taught creative writing at the University of Winnipeg, where she was appointed chancellor. Five years ago, she developed breast cancer. In recent years, Shields spent much of her time in Victoria. Her friends and colleagues say she will be deeply missed. I think the loss will be of such, a, of such an artist um, would have both good and bad effect. As long as we always remember the high quality of that kind of thinking and the courage, uh, she was kind of a, she, she was young. I mean, she's, a, she's a young person, but she, she's um, out of an old school, I think. She would be, I, I would classify her as someone of a, of a sensibility and a certain female civility that doesn't exist anymore. I can think of um, many writers here in Manitoba who considered her a role model just as a person to begin with. Um, um, I, I mean, ask any writer, virtually any writer in Winnipeg, first of all, they'll know Carol, they'll know not only who she is, they'll know her personally, that's the kind of community there is in Winnipeg, but it's also, it's a signal of the kind of person Carol is. Um, and so. I mean, it's, it's literally true, probably, to say that she influenced everyone she met. A wonderful place has gone out of my life. But I think that is true for Winnipeg and for the country, for the people who read her books. 
Memorials are to be held in both Victoria and Winnipeg. Family and friends reflect on the life of Carol Shields in a document. The first thing you notice when you enter Carol Shields' Victoria, B.C. home is her collection of clocks and their hypnotic, lilting rhythm. I, I think they're very emblematic for us. They're um, the ultimate metaphor, I suppose, of our life rushing by us. It's a fitting observation, especially now, through her grueling battle with cancer. Illness doesn't really bless you. It, it, it curses you. It, it made me value time uh, in a way that I suppose I hadn't before. Carol Shields' first influences date back to Chicago, where she was born almost 68 years ago. From the start, she had the curious mind of a writer. But always very conscious of the fact that we can't go up to people and ask them to tell us about their lives. We can't just say, oh, tell me all about yourself. Why are you here? But I was always very needy in that way. I always needed the lives of others, as though my own life wasn't enough. This is a very autobiographical story. It happened that in the city where I grew up, a little girl was murdered. She was 10 years old, my age. It was a terrible murder. A murder that actually happened just down the street and that later showed up in one of Carol's short stories. He cut off her head and her arms and her legs. Some of these pieces were never found. A powerful story, but one that might never have made it to the page if it weren't for her marriage to engineer Dawn Shields. No wonder I married you. <laughs> for your mind. A young wife with a college degree and a penchant for writing. A young wife who needed a push in the right direction. Oh, vaguely, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think Dawn was responsible for uh, standing to one side and um, nagging me a little bit now and then. Uh, what was I planning to do. It didn't take long for Carol to start churning out her thoughts and observations while juggling her role as a supportive wife. Carol has been a super sport as I changed my career and moved from place to place across the country and we've done a lot of things that way so she's always been very ready and easy to uh, I guess accommodate which you know, she's often said that every time we move, there's been a, a reduction in her writing time and a delay in her career. You should see our travel trailer rig here. They moved across the country several times, a brood of young children at her feet. And yet, Carol Shields' literary career had begun. I'm not sure how old I would have been, but no older than seven, maybe when she won first prize in the Canadian, the CBC Poetry Contest. And suddenly there was her poem being read over the radio. And Giardini grew up thinking everyone's mother sat at a typewriter every day. I think I thought it was what mothers did. It never really crossed my mind that everybody did something and my mother wrote on paper for a living, sure. What Anne didn't realize was that she and her four siblings also helped inspire the budding author. I don't think I would have been a writer if I hadn't been a mother. I think uh, I became a mother when I was 22. And I, it was a wake-up call for me. Uh, now I was responsible for another human life. It was shocking. And the poetry were very rooted in our daily lives and people she knew and there was a poem in each book about each of the children, for example. So I felt that it was very tied, certainly, to what the mother I saw. And then, a move to Winnipeg. A move that would provide new fuel for the writer's fire. And a lifetime friendship with a woman who lived next door, Maggie Dwyer. The Shields home was really uh, almost an open house for writers and actors and thinkers and whoever was sort of about lively arts uh, gatherings took place. And anyone who spends time with Carol the person also spends time with Carol the author. 
you often see carol with her notebooks if you were in a cafe down in cordon in winnipeg in the years that she was living here you might have seen her just quietly pull a notebook out of her purse and make a little notation for later review it's quite true that uh, friends can tell when they have interested me they know just a sort of little psychological irony that i like to pick up on. Uh, and they often say here here's something you, you can use in your writing for instance in on the, her most recent novel unless uh, she has the children the d young daughters use the word call, called cronk as a sort of swear word and my daughter and her friends had come up with the word cronk and we were talking about uh, you know, he's a real cronk head and using this word. So Carol then said, may I have it? Carol's use of the world around her paid off, especially while in Winnipeg. Worse, the history of his failed marriages colors the various decent neighborhoods of the city. There's Sheila, his first, out there in the Linden Woods subdivision. Then Claire, but he never did. Carol Shields now has a slew of novels, short stories, and plays to her name and a myriad of awards, including the Pulitzer Prize and the Order of Canada. Carol Shields' life, like her work, is lush with accolades and challenges. I wrote with For five years, Carol battled breast cancer, why? a cancer that uh, spread into her liver. It seemed to me it was uh, well, the breakdown in my health has certainly affected my life, uh, that I now know I can, this life can be interrupted. Uh, and rather ab uh, abruptly uh, ambushed, uh, as it were. Um, but Carol's health didn't stop her from writing. She was preparing a new novel. I'm doing the same thing, but perhaps in a, in a more, perhaps I'm doing it more carefully, um, more point, letting more points of view into, into play, um, letting more happen. And now her loved ones have written a book about Carol. I wanted some kind of portrait of the writer in whole. Editor Neil Besner says it's a collection of essays and memoirs about the author. But Besner says no one should read into the timing of the book. This is not a book that I conceive of as a, some kind of elegy or a eulogy or a celebration of the end of Carol's career. She's writing and she's very happily among us. And so Carol Shields continues to craft her own legacy, one book at a time. Life seems pretty uh, privileged, and uh, I have to say I'm, I'm, uh, I have ended up, of all things, a happy person. Maybe I should end with that. Barbara Brunzel, CBC News, Victoria. Well, how did... It's a real pleasure to read her work because... When Ray Bridgman needs inspiration, this novice writer turns to the literary works of Carol Shields. I never had the chance to meet her in person, but when you read someone's work, you really are getting to know a piece of them. At the age of 68, Carol Shields passed away Wednesday night of complications from breast cancer. Not unexpected, but sad nevertheless. Colleague Neil Besner first worked with Shields in 1986. Over the last 17 years, he's come to love the author's warm heart and infinite curiosity. You'd often see her just put her head down, smile. She'd just slip a little, a little notepad that she always carried out of her pocket, and she would just write something down very quietly, very unobtrusively, and you knew that something had caught her attention. Throughout her literary career, Carol Shields had over 20 books published, including poems, plays, short stories, and of course, novels. She had a way of turning the ordinary into the extraordinary, and Winnipeg was often her inspiration. She lived here for 20 years. She produced 10 of her books here. Many of them are set in Winnipeg or in and around Winnipeg. In 1995, this internationally acclaimed author won the Pulitzer Prize for the Stone Diaries. This Governor General Award winner also served as Chancellor of the University of Winnipeg. That was one of her roles, but she was a mother, she was a grandmother, she was a wonderful wife. Friends who lived in the same condo complex as the Shields say Carol was extremely humble. In fact, here, she's remembered more for the everyday routines of life. What I remember the most is that every Saturday morning, we walk, we march over a um, cafe in Corridon, a couple of blocks from, from here, 
And then we had cappuccinos there and conversation. I think it was her humanity and her humility. I think those are the things that made her connect with all people. And Carol continued working right until the end. She was halfway through a novel based in Chicago, a book that her fans may never get to read. Yes, it is hard. You look forward to the next the next book and what is she going to be doing next? There are memorial services planned for both Victoria and Winnipeg. Carol leaves behind Don, her husband of 46 years, her five adult children and several grandchildren. That, that's how you feel, you feel this emotional wrenching. Yeah. It's easy for Holly McNally to express her feelings when it comes to her friend Carol Shields. When the two women first met in the early 80s, Carol Shields was just a customer at the McNally Robinson bookstore. She eventually became an accomplished writer, and to Holly McNally, she also became a friend. Carol was a very gracious and warm person. Um, she was, she was very strong-minded. I mean, she, was, she had a lot of integrity. For millions of people around the world, hearing or reading a Carol Shields story is a favorite pastime. Our most important ceremonies, birth, love and death are secured by whomever and whatever is available. Neil Besner reads from the Stone Diaries, his favorite Carol Shields book. He and Shields were also very close. Besner wrote about her and even edited some of her work. He says Carol never let her battle with breast cancer stop her from writing. She was working on a new novel um, up until the time of her death. And in Winnipeg, she is a literary icon. How inspiring, her interest in the city uh, as a writer writing stories set in Winnipeg, she had a real passion and knowledge of the city. And even those who didn't know her felt they did through her work. Carol was able to understand love and capture love, and she lived love in terms of her long marriage and her five children, so I felt very saddened. So it's a shame when any great author dies, passes on, you know, you, uh, they leave you, but you're still left with their words and their memories, you know, she was, um, she was a gift. Rochelle Agassé, CKY News. A memorial for Carol Shields is planned for August. There will be two services, one in Victoria and one in Winnipeg.